China has become a major destination and a second home to thousands of international students. China has moved from registering students only for language programs to registering students for other majors like engineering, other science, business, medicine, and what have you. China has become the second home to over 500,000 international students. And this number is expected to double in the years to come. In about five years to come, this number is expected to double. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Roy and I'm a business consultant freelance. So in today's video, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about, we'll be looking at the pros and cons of studying in China. Is having a degree in China really worth it? So welcome my dear viewers. Uh... Before I came to China, I wish I knew this information I'm about to share with you guys now. Actually, I wish I could find such a platform, such an information, such a video where I could get all of what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. So in looking at the analysis of the worth of a Chinese degree or the worth of studying in China, I'm going to be hitting five solid points. First academic qualification. Second, I'll be looking at the affordability of studying in China. Third, I'll be talking about job opportunities, research and internship. Fourth, I'll be talking about personal and professional development. And the last, I'll be talking about health and safety. Apart from a few students who come to China to study a language program, a vast majority of these 500,000 students are either enrolled in a bachelor's, a master, a PhD, or a postdoc study in China. And frankly speaking with you guys, the quality of education in China really varies from city to city and from university to university. The ranking also tends to change every year. And since most of these rankings include elements like the teacher to student ratio, the number of citations, this can sometimes not really be accurate to measure the quality of a Chinese university because the teacher to student ratio in China sometimes are really high based on the number of Chinese students. So how can we really evaluate? How can we really find out the top Chinese university? As a student, before you ever dream of coming to China for studies, the first thing you should do is do your homework, do your research. Based on the degree or program you wish to study, you need to do your research and find out which university offers such a program. And there is one thing you have to note. The first thing you have to note, China has two categories of universities, the A and the B. And the first category, they call it the C9 League, the C9 League, and the second category is called the Double First Class University. I'm going to give a, a summary of what these two categories of universities are in China. So let's look at uh, what the C9 League universities in China are. And you should know that the C9 League universities in China are equivalent to the Ivy League universities in the United States of America. So which are these C9 League universities in China? The C9 League universities include Fudan University, Harbin University of Technology, Nanjing University, Peking University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Tsinghua University, the University of Science and Technology of China, Jiao Tong University, and Zhejiang University. If you can get admission in one of these universities I've just mentioned, then you need to consider yourself lucky because these universities offer high quality education, almost equivalent, I mean almost equivalent to top universities in the United States of America. Even Chinese students, before getting into such universities, 
they go through a rigorous exam called the Gaokao. The Gaokao. And passing this Gaokao to get admitted into these universities, only 0.5% of the millions of students who go for this Gaokao get admitted into such universities. The second category of universities in China is called the double first class university. And in China, we have 46 universities that are in this category. So because of because I don't want to make this video too long, if you ever dream of studying in China, or if you have ambitions of studying in China, or if you're already studying in China, you need to go online and check which category does your university belongs to. The double first class university, there are 46 universities in China that, that belong to this category of university. So in addition to the C9 league universities and the double first class universities, we also have the 985 universities and the 211 university. So you need to know which category of university am I applying for? Is it the C9 league university? Is it a double first class university? Is it a 985 university? Or it's a 211 university. These universities have standards, world standards, that if a university is in this category, if you go online, you will find information which says that if a university in China is in the 211 category, it's equivalent to this university in Canada, it's equivalent to this university in the United States, or it's equivalent to this university in the UK. And if this university is in the 985 category it's equivalent to this university if it's equivalent to the double first class university it's equivalent to this or if it is equivalent to the c9 league university it's equivalent to this so before you make your choice of a university you need to go online and find which category does my university belong to those are some of the things that before you criticize chinese universities you need to know which university is it because students just go online meet agents who extort money from them and enroll them in any university in China. And when they come to China and they don't get the value of education that they expected, they go online and start spreading rumors, start spreading false information about the quality of education in China. Meanwhile, they were not enrolled in universities that have the standard. So looking at the, the, the analysis of the different categories of universities, okay, now you have choose the university where you wish to study in. It doesn't end there. You need to go ahead and look at the location of these universities because China is so vast and different cities have different policies. You can live in a city in China and you move to another city in China and you think that you're not in China. Different universities in different cities have quite different policies. That a policy in Shanghai might be quite different from a policy maybe in Beijing or in Nanjing or in another university. The experience that an international student will have in Shanghai will be different from the experience that an international student will have in another city or in Beijing and so on. So you need to consider the city in which you're studying in. You need to consider the language in which this course is being offered. Students get admitted and only arrive in China to discover that they applied for a Chinese taught program and they didn't know. And once they come and it's difficult, they start to complain that they applied for a Chinese taught program. Secondly, you have to look at, the, you have to go online and research and look about the, the experience, what other students have shared about this university, about this city. Once you have all this in place, then you can go ahead and apply to this university. And now let's look at the next point. Let's talk about affordability. And I will say this clearly without minting my words, that it is extremely cheap. It is really affordable to study in China as an international student. Looking at what other students pay to study in the United States, to study in the UK, to study in Canada, in the same tier of universities, it is extremely cheap compared to the same category of universities in China. Looking at the cost of living, looking at the cost of accommodation, if, whether you're staying on campus or you're living off campus, it is extremely cheap. And in addition to that, there are several scholarships that the Chinese government offers to students every year, ranging from the Chinese government scholarship, the provincial scholarship, 
the presidential scholarship, the university-based scholarship, and different organizations, different government institutions give different scholarships every year. I, for one, I studied on a scholarship in China. And even before I graduated, I got another scholarship while I was on a scholarship. There are scholarships that you can get financially to support you. So studying in China, really, if you look at it in depth, it is really affordable. Okay, so let's go into a more interesting point. Job opportunities, internships, and research opportunities. And on this point, I'm going to look at two scenarios, A and B. Scenario A, you want to work while studying. And scenario B, you want to work after you graduate. Scenario A is a big no. You can't work in China as a student. It's a capital no. They will deceive you and tell you, oh, you can do part-time jobs, you can do... It's a big no. It is illegal to work in China as a student. If you are caught by the police, you will get deported. That is scenario A. I have nothing to say about that. It's illegal to work in China as a student. They will tell you other stories, but here on this platform, I say it's illegal to work in China as an international student. If the program that you're studying in has internship, research, yes, you can do your internship based on your study program and nothing out of your study program. And it is clearly stated that you are not supposed to be paid while you are doing that internship. You can have an allowance, which the Chinese government has a limit to be paid as an international student while you're doing an internship. So this depends on the company. This depends on the university. This depends on the city you're studying in. Like I said, different cities in China have different rules. I don't have much information about this, but like all I know is different cities have different policies for internship, different policies for work, and so on. So as a student, if your program defines that you have to do an internship from this period to this period. Yes, you can do an internship. And yes, you can get an allowance from this company, depend on the company's policies. Okay, now let's look at this scenario B. You want to work after you graduate. This scenario, it's a very, it's really a complicated one because it varies from city to city and it varies from company to company. So many companies in China are not legally allowed to recruit foreigners yes they cannot recruit foreigners so if you're studying in china with the aim of working in china it might become very difficult for you after you graduate you need to go back to your country so many companies in china are not legally allowed to recruit foreigners and even if the few that are allowed to recruit foreigners the rules are so strict that they'll tell you oh you need to have two years of working experience you need to graduate from a top, from the top 500 universities in the world. You need to have this uh, amount of experience. You need to have this and that and this. So it's really difficult as a foreigner to work in China after you graduate. You might only do maybe a job that is not related to what you actually studied. Because the Chinese population, they have a lot of manpower. They have a lot of skilled workers. So even if you have an opportunity to work in China, you must possess some rare skills that Chinese don't have. And you know, they have almost, I don't know, everything. They are skilled in almost every area. So you're only allowed to do what they cannot do. So if you're studying in China, you should have the objective of returning to your country after you graduate. And even if I may add to the working issue, one thing that will really limit you working in China after you graduate is the language. How will you work in China if you can speak Chinese? Unless your company is an international company where everyone speaks English or where you mostly deal with foreign clients and so on. So working in China, you need to be able to speak Chinese. And you can't tell me that within two or three years in China, you have a working language. You might just be able to express yourself. You might just be able to find your way out. But having the working ability to having the language that will allow you to work will really be difficult unless you want to work in a Chinese company back in your country, which you will have an advantage. 
China is expanding in the world and in so many countries we have Chinese based companies. So you who worked, you who have studied in China will be given an advantage because you've studied in China, you understand the Chinese culture, you understand how to deal with Chinese people and you have at least that limited working language and ability. So you will be considered and you will be given an advantage over students who studied in your country. Okay, let's look at the fourth point, which is uh, personal and professional development. Now, in this uh, point, I would like us to consider two things. Let's look at a student who studied in the United States or in Canada or in the UK and a student who studied in China. So many people will be fast to say that all those who studied in the, in, in the United States or in Canada or in the UK are better placed than students who studied in uh, China. I would say a big no here because this depends solely on the individual. If you want to make it in China as an international student, if you want to be outstanding in China as an international student, this depends on you. You can make it because you have all the resources at your disposal. If you're a student who is into sciences, if you're a student who is in, into engineering or business or medicine, you have all these resources at your disposal. Yeah, the lecturers might not be well versed with the language, but they have the technical know-how. They can tell you what to do. They can direct you on what to do. Looking at the fact that most students who come to study in China are mostly doing maybe a, a research program, maybe a master's degree or, or a PhD degree, you don't even need your lecturers that much. You just need the resources. You just need the directives. And that is what these Chinese universities are providing. They are giving you the platform. They are giving you the opportunity. They are giving you the links to these companies, the links to these CEOs. So you don't, you don't have to be spoon fed because students will always complain and say, oh, we go to class, the teacher can't speak good English. Oh, the, like, the supervisors are doing this, they're doing that. They are not supposed to spoon feed you with everything. Yeah, I also made the same complaint. I did the same thing. I said, oh, the bird. Now I'm realizing a lot of advantages that if I had known from day one when I came to China, I would have made a lot out of this my three years in China. So you have the opportunities. You have the platforms. They expose you to a lot of opportunities. You just need to catch them. You just need to make value out of what you've been provided. Because the lecturers can link you to whatever company as long as you, you provide to them something reasonable. You say, okay, this is a project that I have. This is something that I'm trying to build. I need the resources. I need the link to this. They will provide it to you. So you can build yourself. It's, it's based on you as an individual and not the government or the university or your professor. It's based on you as an individual. Okay, now let's go to the last point. Let's look at the health and safety. Let me start with the health. I would say that as an international student, China is a relatively healthy place to live. All students are covered with uh, medical and health insurance, which means that if you're sick or if you have an accident or if you get into some kind of trouble, the insurance covers you. So you don't need to bother about going to the hospital to spend a whole lot of, of, of money, the insurance pays for that. So guys, that's it for today's video. But before I go, I'll leave you guys with two major takeaways. And the first one is, you don't have to look at a top university, but you have to look at a university that meets your needs and aspirations. You have to ask yourself, what am I studying for? Before you even go, before you even start your, your, your search, what am I studying for? Does this university or is this university able to provide the kind of knowledge or the kind of training that I really want to get at the end of my program? And lastly, once you found out this university, go into the alumni groups, try to contact students, current students who are studying in this university, find out their experiences, how they, they went through their programs and get first-hand information from them. Now, once you're at this level, then you think you're on the right track. So guys, this is all I gathered to share with you today. If you like this video, 
give us a thumbs up and if you have something to add or if you have a question drop it down at the comment section and share this information with someone share this video and if you've not yet subscribed to our channel we will have more videos like this even better ones subscribe and i will see you in our next video until now i say peace out and